Hello, my friends. Andy coming to you live from Orange County, California. And um, yeah, it just seems like I was just on a few minutes ago. It's like deja vu, but a different show. Um, and I won't be stammering around this one as much because I'm going to be talking directly just about what's happening in our country. And that's uh, a lot easier to talk about than uh, personal situations that are going on in my life. But what I want you to do is go to the Andy Falco podcast.com, the Andy Falco podcast.com, the URL that's right above my head here. Uh, and that is to subscribe to the podcast. Um, given the subject matter in regard to my show, which I obviously will be talking about from time to time, probably more often than not. And that is our political situation and why it's important to have uh, conservative Christians uh, running our country as opposed to the demonic demons of uh, Democrats that are currently uh, running our country in, in many aspects, um, have taken control of our country uh, in the election, have taken control of our country in the form of, um, of senators that are just... Um, horrible people and the rhinos that are uh, currently in our in our government uh, and so we're going to be talking about that uh, a little bit more often and today I did not I was just watching Dan Bongino I didn't know that he was going to kind of be echoing some of the things I'm going to be talking about but what I was thinking uh, and the reason I wanted to come on today as uh, we go into 2021 and begin to talk about you know who it is that we want to support in government whether it's in California or across the uh, the country um, and even school board members, we have to start in our very local elections. It's a really important place to start for all of us that have a, a chance to vote in upcoming elections um, is, uh, the, you know, those uh, races that have to do with, again, uh, you know, uh, uh, school board members, city council members, mayors, uh, um, uh, representatives within our state, that kind of, we really need to concentrate and really understand who is running now, as opposed to what I, I may have done in my past, which is, I don't even know who some of these people are, uh, whether it's like, you know, people running for, uh, the, the water district or judges, uh, that may be running for a separate terms. I, I, I remember that I would simply just look for if they're the Republican, or I would just say, well, who's the incumbent? And if, if, if things have been going pretty good, I would simply vote for the incumbent. And sometimes that could be a Democrat. It could be an independent and become a Republican. But what I'm asking you and the reason I wanted to come on tonight is that we have to not do stuff like that. I may be simply talking to myself. Every, all of you may be a lot smarter than I have been over the years. But sometimes we just seem like we don't have time, right? We get these ballots in the mail. We, we look, we know who's running for president. We know who's running for governor and we, we make really strong, um, uh, decisions to vote for those, uh, candidates because they seemingly are more important. But what you have to understand, it is the small, um, uh, races. If you can even say they're small, you, it's the other races that are probably equally as important as those uh, of, of higher power uh, because the president can't do anything really without the support of the Senate, without the support of the Congress, without the support of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the separate states. You know, the, the, we found during the pandemic that the president has a very little power uh, within what's happening within state. When, when there's rioting, the, 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 the president actually has to ask for permission to send in uh, the National Guard. He can't just simply send in the National Guard unless, it, in, unless things get really bad. So there's a, a lot of things we have to understand that um, uh, that were realized, that were um, exposed uh, during uh, the all the riots that was going on, all the unrest, all the, the, the issues in regard to the pandemic. We, we realized that, wait a minute, um, we, we allowed, you know, these mayors to become in power. I mean, you look at Portland, right? Look what the mayor in Portland did to just simply destroy their city. Uh, we have a DA in Los Angeles who's simply destroying Los Angeles all by himself. He doesn't, he doesn't need the help of the president. He doesn't need the help of the governor or anybody else. He's simply destroying the city of Los Angeles all by himself because he's refusing to prosecute misdemeanors uh, and probably some uh, 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 felonies uh, in that city. Um, he, uh, there he's, he's moving towards a no bail, um, uh, no bail for many of these crimes. It's, if you get arrested, you just get out with a promise to appear. You don't have to put up any money. Um, it is really one of the craziest things we've ever seen there. So there's no consequence to, to committing petty theft. There's no consequence to, to committing mal, uh, uh malicious mischief. There's no consequence to, to stealing a, a car in many cases because they're not going to do anything about it. They're not going to prosecute anybody. Nobody's going to be, um, uh, held accountable for the actions in Los Angeles unless you murder somebody. And that's not even always the case. If you are a, uh, an illegal alien, you commit murder. You don't, it's a sanctuary city. You get, you get released. We just had a murderer released here in Los Angeles. I put a post on my personal page about a murderer who got released, but thank God to ICE 
who, who had heard that this person was released and they took him back into custody because in LA, they just simply released him because he was an illegal alien and it's a sanctuary city. So we have to understand that these, these smaller races are really important. That brings me to talking about Georgia. We have Georgia coming up, and I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I think I know a couple people that are in Georgia. I'm going to have to search my Facebook and and, and just private message them and say, "Hey, um, don't allow. Don't you got you got to do the right thing. <laughs> you got to you got to vote for the Republican senators that are in place. Are they going to be fantastic? I don't know." But I know for sure they're going to be better than the Democrats. There's no doubt in my mind. We cannot have a Democratic, um, 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 uh, you know, Senate um, uh, that's going to, um, uh, in Congress, ruling what's happening in our country. We really have to work hard in this Georgia election coming up as Republican conservatives um, uh, and make sure that the Republicans get elected. I know that we have a, a huge hurdle uh, to overcome in regard to the election corruption that is currently, um, uh, that we know happened within the president uh, ele- the, the election where the president uh, was um, simply robbed from being uh, getting into a second term through all the corruption that was uh, that was in place. And, and in Georgia, that's one of the places where we saw corruption. So we have a huge hurdle. We have to make sure that doesn't happen again. I don't know how what safeguards are putting in. I don't know what's happening. Um, the Democrats are not afraid of just doing it in plain light in, in daylight. They're not afraid of, of you seeing the fact that they're blocking, uh, you know, Republicans, GOP members from watching the, the, the ballot counting. They're not afraid to let you know that, you know, that they're just sending out all these ballots and they're coming back, um, you know, um, you know, with only the one, um, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the one person voting, uh, you know, the one person that's running in the presidency, only the president was elected, not any of the, 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 um, the, uh, the people running underneath the president, none of those boxes were 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 marked which is highly unusual they don't care they go oh, whatever uh, dead people were voting um, all these ballots were sent to senior citizens homes where senior citizens uh, had you know they have no clue of who they're voting for so um, they they just took their ballots and, and other people filled out their ballots for them and said hey let, let's just take your ballots it's okay we'll make sure and, and mark them appropriately and uh, and then voted for Biden in that case they don't they don't care about any of that all that stuff is out in, in public and in the light and the Democrats don't care so they'll probably Probably try to do the same thing. So that is a huge hurdle that we're going to have to overcome. But we need people in Georgia to overwhelm um, the uh, the state there with votes for the Republican uh, senators that are run, running over there. Uh, I understand that Jack Hibbs has a, a ad running over there. He's a California pastor here at Calvary Chapel Chimney Hills. He uh, during the message he said that he has an ad uh, with him speaking on it um, about voting for the people that are pro life. And uh, and doesn't even name the candidates uh, that are running in, in Georgia that he just says, hey, vote for the candidates that are for pro-life and you'll be doing the right thing in regard to you know, conservative Christians and really sending that message out to them. Um, let me see some of these comments that are coming up. We got uh, uh, <laughs> we got our Twitter friends that are uh, coming on just laughing, uh, but uh, that's OK. That's always good. Uh, uh, what a joke. Uh, what is the other guy's laughing? I'm not sure who the impress impressed much who that guy is. He's obviously a, um, uh, a, a moron <laughs> and doesn't know what he's talking about. Hey, Julie, nice to see you. Demorats. Hey, Corinder, nice to see you. Um, you got a double dose of Andy Corinder today. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, we understand what's happening in our country. Those of us, those of you that are in Georgia really need to do the right thing. Um, and so I wanted to address that. The last thing I want to address is that our pastor, again, bringing up Jack Hibbs again over at Calvary Chapel. What, one thing he talked about is that when our um, when our constitution was created, when the, our our forefathers were brought together uh, to write uh, our, the Bill of Rights, their constitution, everything that really began this country, he, he brought up the fact that it was um, um, it was a, probably an act of God that brought all these geniuses together, uh, and it, it was an incredible task that they um, had to create. Um, uh, laws and, and like again a um, a constitution for this country that was unlike that's that was and is unlike any other country on the planet and we have uh, you know different races we have different religions we have um, we have believers we have non-believers that 
are, are a part of this country. And it's really unlike most other countries that are out there. If you look at a country like China or Korea, uh, it, there really isn't the diversity that you have in the United States. Now, in Canada, you do and maybe some other countries. But really, the, the, our country is really pretty unique that you have people trying to break into our country because it's so great. You have people that are that are constantly trying to become citizens of our country because it's so fantastic. You really don't see that with other countries like you do the United States of America. It is the least racist country on the planet and is one of the most giving uh, countries on the planet. Does that mean that there's no corruption? No. Does that mean that we haven't made some bad decisions in the past? No. Um, we always have worked towards abolition of slavery from the beginning of our country all the way to where uh, we finally outlawed slavery. We had a war, had a civil war, uh, in regard to that aspect of it. And that is one of the, the, the great parts of our history. And what ended up happening is that we, um, we, uh, we fought and we, uh, we won against slavery in the sense that, uh, you know, that we did the right thing. That has always been our history. If, if, if bad things have happened, we have worked towards uh, trying to correct for most of those things for the most part. We are at that time in our country again where we have a whole number of people that are trying to corrupt our country. We have uh, a large number of people that are trying to take our country in a different uh, direction. Um, they are circumventing our uh, constitution. They want us to become socialists and Marxists uh, in our country. And we simply have to fight against it. That is what's really important that we understand right now. Um, I know many people in, in, in some people that are close to me that think that our country is is doomed. Um, I've seen uh, messages I've gotten from people that there, there's no hope for our country. Um, I choose not to have that um, uh, that feeling. <laughs> I choose not to have um, that take over my life. I, I am willing to fight until the end for our country. I'm willing to fight uh, till the end for our church. I'm, uh, you know, in uh, our, our God given rights uh, that we have in this country. And um, I'm not willing to give up. The fact that we had a, a large number of genius, the geniuses that just kind of congregated all together. And uh, as Jack said, they didn't all even get along. Not all of them were Christians. Not all of them were even believers. And yet they found that it was important to have God in our country because God's written into our constitution. Um, we, uh, they, they found that it was necessary to, um, to, to find a way to agree on the things that were best for the country. And in, even in the areas where they, they couldn't agree, they found a compromise and were able to, to develop a constitution and all their bill of rights and everything that goes along with it to create a country that was fantastic. Uh, and then would go on and still survive uh, hundreds of a, a couple hundred years later as we go forward. Unfortunately, what we have right now is a an, is a large number of not so bright people that are running our country. We have people simply that uh, you know could not could not run a business that are trying to run a country. Um, we have people that are completely corrupt running our country, um, and that that is true. But I I, I, I always want to believe that good will prevail on some level. Um, and we just have to continue to fight and not give up. And again, like I said earlier, when I was starting this, this whole conversation is that we have to start locally and really stay strong locally and then work out from there. We cannot forget about the small races. We cannot forget about the Senate races in the, in the Congress. The Senate race in Georgia is one of the, an example of that, how big that, that race is. It's huge. Um, as we go into the next four years, if we lose those seats in the, in the Senate, we are going to have a much tougher time. Um, again, even with that, I'm not willing to give up. But let's start there. Those, those two seats uh, that we need to win in Georgia are, are, are incredibly important. And we need to encourage anybody that we know in Georgia to um, to vote for those uh, two Republicans that are they're running in Georgia. And we need to encourage everybody to do that. Um, Let's see what Sandy has to say. Praying you are right. I am a fighter as well. There's a large number of other fighters out there. We have more fighters than I think um, than we know. Uh, what what the what the media wants uh, wants you to believe, and what uh, social media wants you to believe. At least the people that run social media want you to believe that there are far more liberals uh, and crazy Democrats out there. I, I really. I feel strongly that is not the case. Uh, I, I feel strongly that our, our great president won by probably hundreds of thousands, if not a million votes. Um, uh, you know, 80 million people is, is believed that voted for uh, President Trump and yet only seven, I think it's shown something like 72 million. 72 million is still a lot of people. 
Right. Um, and so uh, but I, I do think the numbers are larger. I do believe that based on, uh, you know, what I'm hearing um, from other people, uh, you know, that I follow on social media and some people like Dan Bongino, who, again, I was I was listening to before I came on. And it's funny that he was he was talking about some of the, the we have some of the dumbest people right now running our country. People like uh, Adam Schiff and Schumer and Pelosi uh, in the state of California. We have uh, our dimwit governor. I even hate to say his name because he's just an idiot. You got a governor in New York. You have a mayor in New York. The the the, country, the two states that are the, are handling the pandemic the worst. Um, it's no surprise that it's California and New York, right? The, the, it's the two states that have have, have shut down uh, with the greatest amount of uh, restrictions are New York and California. Yet we are the we are the worst in regard to the pandemic. We have um, more people wearing masks than any other state. Yet if they we are the worst in regard to the infections of of the of the pandemic. We have <laughs> um, uh, the highest taxes, and yet we in California we have the highest taxes, and yet we have uh, rolling blackouts because of of the fires that were occurring earlier this uh, uh, this year. Uh, we have. Um, um, what else do we have? We have, uh, what else? There's some other things that are happening. Well, well we have the first crime, uh, in, in, in many of this, than in any other state in, in Los Angeles, um, and prosecutions than any other, um, uh, state in the, uh, in the union. We have the worst DA in, who used to be in San Francisco, who's now in Los Angeles, who's, who's not prosecuting misdemeanors. Uh, yet we have the highest taxes. Uh, it is really, um, uh, an example of what you, if you vote Democrat in any other uh, state or any other election, just look at California. That is, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get what's happening in California. You're going to get what's happening in New York. These are two of the, the worst run states um, in the union. Uh, if you look at Oregon and, and, and Washington, you look what's happening in Portland, you look what's happening in Seattle in regard to homelessness. That was, that's the one I was looking for the other, er, uh, earlier when I was trying to figure out what the other one was. We have the, the most homeless in San Francisco and Los Angeles than any other state in the union. Um, it is, it is, um, it is tripled. I don't know if it's quadrupled yet, but I know that it's tripled. Uh, and that one of the reasons is because they're giving uh, stuff away for free. Who, who didn't think that giving alcohol and uh, narcotics paraphernalia and uh, giving them uh, free hotels and motels to stay in, who didn't think in, in just even in, in their, in, the dumbest minds uh, that we have uh, on the planet, even they would have realized that if you give away free narcotics, free alcohol, free rooms and free food, that you wouldn't increase the homeless. That, that, that doesn't make any sense that anybody thought that was going to help the homeless situation. That is not, there is, there's not anybody that I know of other than, um, uh, I don't know anybody that ever thought that that was going to help uh, reduce the number of homeless in our state. Uh, it was, there's no doubt uh, that we have some of the dumbest people running our, our states and our country. And it really is up to us to, uh, to take it back. And so what I'm wanting to come on today is just implore you to stay strong to no longer stay silent. Uh, we, we've heard about the silent majority for far too long. We can no longer be the silent majority. Um, and we we need to begin to take our country back. Sitting back and allowing these uh, idiots to take over our country and our states um, has gone on for too long. And we need to really take it back. Um, let's see. You're going to send the comments at, at 2.23 a.m. Oh you're, oh, you're still up at 2.23 a.m. <laughs> hey, Robert Block. Nice to see you. Hey, Diane. Nice to see you. And Anne is on. So nice to see you. So we need to start spreading the word. What I do want you also uh, to remember what I what I said at the very beginning. Some of you joined a little bit late. Is it the, at the top of my um, screen here? It says the Andy Falco, uh, the Andy Falco podcast dot com. Make sure and go to that URL. That'll take you to my podcast on iHeartRadio. And make sure and subscribe. Um, we're gonna uh, hopefully have some people we'll be interviewing in the near future. I'm gonna be interviewing um, our school board members. Hopefully more than one. Uh, to talk about what uh, you need to know about what's happening in our schools here in California and what may be happening to other schools across, across the country. Um, I am so happy to, to, uh, to, to report that we have had three Republicans, um, uh, Christian conservatives, get voted into our local school board here in the Yorba Linda, uh, Placentia Yorba Linda School District. And uh, like I said before, that is where it starts. So having three voted in in the same election, I think is huge for us down here. Uh, and I want to talk to them about what it is that you need to know about 
um, why they ran, number one, and what they need to know what's happening here in California uh, in regard to a few issues like, um, you know, sex education and not having to report, you know, to parents about um, uh, certain things that are, that are, that, you know, kids are making decisions about the sex, what their sex is going to be, that they, there's options that they're going to be told to them without and not have to report that to the parents, to having um, an abortion, to having um, uh, a whole number of issues that may be brought up in school and are not allowed to tell the parents that that is um, uh, it's shocking and uh, just something that we need to be aware of that may be happening in our schools in here in California and maybe happening to schools across the United States. So I want to make sure and talk about that with our school board, um, uh, our new school board members here in um, in Orange County. Um, I had one more subject here. I'm looking on my screen. Oh, I talked about it. And that is that California has the worst uh, COVID-19 uh, spreading in America. Um, and uh, I touched on it earlier. But what is um, so interesting, as I said before, is that we have uh, right here. It says the poor record has continued yesterday alone. California had 22,856 infections. This seems a little ironic, doesn't it? After all, California has was the first state to put a lockdown in place. They have uh, arguably been the most locked down state in the country. Since then, they have had a mask mandate starting in June. And according to COVID cast, 90.87% of Californians were wearing masks. Everything the experts have said to do to fight Corona, California has done and, uh, and, and then some. And yet we are the worst in, in the, in the country. Um, so, um, Something's something's wrong. Something is terribly wrong with this uh, with this state. If you want the rest of the country that looks like California uh, to look like California, then, um, you know, vote Democrat. If you want improvement, if you want to look a little bit more like what Florida looks like, and that is they also it's not like the the, the coronavirus stops at the border of, of Florida. Right. But Florida has a different way of how they've opened up. Uh, they tell uh, they've instructed people to to do their part as far as uh, staying six feet apart and uh, those that are most vulnerable to make sure that they're masked. And yet they've opened up their state. They, uh, I, I was just reading uh, from a friend of mine that said we are going to restaurants. Um, they Disneyland's open in Florida. Uh, they have, a uh, you know, all of their um uh, their beaches are open, not that you're necessarily going to the beach necessarily in, in wintertime, but all their beaches are open, all of their uh, tourist attractions are open, and yet they are not having the, the same uh, infections as the state of California, the state of New York. And their population is larger than the state of New York, not bigger than the state of California, but their population is larger than the state of New York. And yet New York is probably number two in regard to infections. And yet they have more lockdowns, more masking mandates and more restrictions than the state of uh, state of Florida. And state of Florida is essentially open, but again, leaving it to their residents to be careful, uh, wash, you know, instructing them to wash their hands, wear masks when necessary and social distancing um, if you uh, when you can and uh, and letting the citizens go back to uh, as much of normal as they possibly can eating in restaurants and everything that I said before. And so something seriously wrong. We really need to take our country back. We cannot live this way. And um, and I want to prove Hedy a wrong uh, in saying that we are going to go back to normal. I, I think at some point we're <laughs> back to normal. Uh, we can see it in states like Florida uh, and in some parts of, of Texas, what I'm understanding. I don't know as much about Texas as I've heard about Florida, but um, uh, but the, but it's only going to happen if we vote some of these idiots out and we stay strong and vote uh, conservative Christian and Republican and vote. And I'm not saying all Republicans are good. Understand that I'm not saying <laughs> that all Republicans, we obviously have some problems with some Republicans. So it's not simply voting for a Republican, it's voting for the right Republicans and voting out those Republicans that are not um, doing us um, um, uh, right, not following what it is that we want and voting them out. We simply got to vote them out. We obviously got to vote out uh, every Democrat. There's not one Democrat that uh, we can say is doing the right thing. They, um, they are not the, the Democratic Party of old and, um, and just have gone, that's totally gone haywire. I'm not, I, I, there's a, a, lot, a lot of other words I want to use, and I'm really trying to be I'm trying to be good and not <laughs> and not say the things I want to say. All right, my friends. So I just wanted to come out and, and just kind of get to uh, this. Um, the, the new year started. I know we're not there yet, but we really have a lot of work to do in the upcoming uh, year. 
uh, in regard to our, our country. We need to to work really hard to get our country back. We need to really pay attention to what's happening and we really need to uh, not be silent anymore and need to wake up. And yes, Carl's right. We need to vote out the rhinos. The rhinos, I, the rhinos in some way are a little bit even more dangerous than the Democrats. The Democrats are right up in front in their idiocy and their and the, the fact that they don't care, uh, that they really are, are showing themselves as being Marxist socialists and, um, and really don't care. Uh, about the middle class whatsoever. They are definitely for increasing the lower uh, parts of our uh, community and and making things worse for them and for uh, putting more money in the wealthy and the elite. Uh, but the middle class, they really just don't care about. Just look at the recent um, uh, stimulus bill. It, it's just, it's a, it's one of the most ridiculous things. I, and I didn't want to get all uh, into that because we know that it's stupid and it, it's easy to see that they didn't care uh, about uh, Americans. They cared about uh, illegal aliens. They cared about other countries, uh, but they really did not care about America. The stimulus bill had nothing to do with, with Americans at all. Uh, it's $600 uh, that they originally wanted to give us uh, is just, it just, just tells you everything that you need to know that we need to vote these idiots out that uh, the, everything else about that bill was ridiculous. All right, my friends, that's it. I just want to come on and just kind of get you uh, started in what we're going to be talking about over the next year. And uh, to make sure that you follow me on the, the Andy Falco podcast.com to go there. That would take you to iHeartRadio, where you need to subscribe and, um, and follow me there. And we'll be talking more about this stuff as uh, the days go on. And, uh, and I hope you guys have a great, <laughs> with all that, I hope you guys have a great night. Uh, but I want you to contact your friends that are all in Georgia. Contact your friends in Georgia. Talk to them. Make sure they're going to be doing the right thing over there in Georgia. And if they say that they're not, ask them why. And then, and then see if you can't uh, change their mind. And, but do it with love. Don't do it with anger. And don't call them morons. Um, uh, that's my tendency. <laughs> all right. All right, my friends. I love you guys. Have a great night. And we will see you on the next one. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.